from both. Um, because, and, and listen, we have to look at this as a, a really a failed experiment. You know, with such high expectations, when these guys got together, you know, we, it, it seems like years ago that they also had James Harden. Remember, they ended up trading him yeah. as well. So they're going to have those three guys will have been on this roster last earlier this season and now at the end of the season they could all be off of it and I, I you know there's a lot of talk about whether he ends up with LA uh, with the Lakers do they have enough to tempt uh, Brooklyn to want to make that deal or does he just get bought out ultimately and then have the opportunity to go and sign as a free agent so there's still a lot to be decided in Brooklyn's case I, and, and quite frankly in, in Ryan knows sometimes they don't know what they're going to do because there is an emotional shock of all this stuff yeah. and you have to process it and then you got to start looking at what's in the best interest of our organization moving forward. It, the Laker thing is so interesting to me because, yeah, you got the whole uh, relationship with LeBron James and, and reuniting with him. But then you just look at the Lakers of the way that they're constructed right now. That was a flawed team last year. Now, you add Kyrie Irving a fantastic player, but you still got Russell Westbrook if you can't get rid of it. There's so many pieces. Like, how would you see Kyrie fitting on that Lakers squad? Well, there's no way to acquire Kyrie, in my opinion, without Westbrook going out. That okay. doesn't necessarily mean he needs to go to... Brooklyn, but on a $47 million expiring contract, Westbrook's had a phenomenal career. He's heading to the Hall of Fame, but he is a unique player and a somewhat polarizing player. And keep in mind, the Lakers still owe a draft pick and a swap right to New Orleans for the Anthony Davis deal. So it's not like they can just incentivize a team to take Russ and then bring in Kyrie. It's, it's hard because they don't have a lot of draft compensation. They don't have a lot of young players. And Westbrook makes so much money that the deal gets real complex. So I understand that's what Kyrie wants, uh, but it's not easy for for the Lakers and keep in mind with the way Kyrie has behaved in Brooklyn the Nets probably don't want to reward him for that kind of behavior if they can get a good return or even a decent return somewhere else for Kyrie I bet they take it regardless of whether it's his preferred destination you, you were talking about this just a few years ago I mean they put this big three together how, how difficult do you think it is for Brooklyn and especially the management to to pull the emotion out of this thing right because this is not the way it was supposed to go no listen the reality is they got a lot of egg on their face I mean, they, they do, and, and sometimes the best intentions just don't pan out, and that's what's been the case here. And, and we see this a lot in sports where on paper all this stuff looks wonderful. And then when it gets tough, we remember when LeBron went to Miami. You know, they got off to a horrific start. They got embarrassed in the finals, but they stayed the course, and their guys all bought in. A little bit different dynamic here. You know, they had a first-year coach. Uh, when they brought Steve Nash on board, and it seemed like it, from all the reports we're getting that it's really KD and Kyrie running the team, which is also a mistake. So it, because of all the circumstance surrounding it, it's unfortunate, and you hate to see it happen because, you know, you think about Kevin Durant, he's never asked to be traded. You know, he's gone to a couple teams, but it was always in free agency. Yeah. So you can only imagine what had to be transpiring for him to get to a point where he felt like he had to ask to be moved. And he knew also how this would play league-wide. And, and you can see it's having a tremendous impact throughout the league. It's a tremendous impact throughout the league. So we wait on the Kevin Durant news. And as we wait, we look into the biggest trade of the day, which was Rudy Gobert moving on to Minnesota for a huge haul going the other way. Four first-round draft picks, plus Walker Kessler was a first-round pick for this year's draft uh, going the other way. And the fit is so interesting for Minnesota, right? Because now Carl Anthony Towns moves over to the power forward position. Gobert, how do you see that working out between the two? Uh, well, the, you know what? They're going to have some challenges at times. But I, I listen, I think skill-wise, because of Towns' versatility, he can slide over to the four. I, I think he can play well enough in space defensively. Definitely can offensively. Um, and, and, and that's been one of their issues. Uh, defensively, they were trending in the right direction this past season, Minnesota. I think that Rudy Gobert helps them tremendously. I think they're also more skilled offensively than Utah was. And I think that's another area where maybe he can't get exploited the way he was at times, I felt, in the postseason. So I I'm anxious to see it. I mean, everyone's seeing how much they got. They got some solid players. They did get the four first-round picks. But those picks are all based on whether or not Minnesota does well. Because if you give a team four picks in the 20s, that doesn't necessarily have the same kind of impact as unprotected lottery picks that could pan out to be top five. 
Really interesting move by the Minnesota Timberwolves in a league that tends to get smaller and faster every year. They have a giant team. And I think one of the advantages they will have throughout the course of 48-minute games in the regular season in particular is they'll always have an elite big man on the court, whether it's Carl Anthony Towns and his offensive gifts or Rudy Gobert, multi-time defensive player of the year. Those guys will play together some. Uh, the question that I don't think we have an answer to at this point is when other teams do go small with a lot of shooting, will they be able to guard the perimeter? Will, will Towns be able to chase guys around on the perimeter? That remains to be seen, but certainly a very aggressive move and a counter trend move from the Minnesota Timberwolves in a pace and space league to go with a giant team led by two seven footers. What about the Utah Jazz now? What, what do they do? Because they still have Donovan Mitchell. They got Kevin Durant has been known to make a headline or two. His trade request has shifted the entire landscape of the NBA. We're on KD Watch as the night goes on at NBA TV. Meanwhile, there's a new set of Twin Towers in the NBA. Rudy Gobert is on his way to Minnesota for a huge haul. What does that mean for Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz moving forward? Plus, rumors and reports of a Kyrie Irving LeBron James reunion. They are heating up. He wants L.A. L.A. reportedly wants him. The NBA just does not miss when it comes to the drama. Welcome to Free Agent Fever. To Bill Cream alongside Ryan McDonough, Greg Anthony. It has been a long day. I am two and a half Red Bulls in. I just realized I'm going to have to go to sleep at some point. Uh, but I just opened this Red Bull. I feel bad not finishing it now. Uh, but I'm going to need it because we've got to be here for a few minutes. Uh, and we've got to talk about the transactions that have happened throughout the day. We're going to get into that Rudy Gobert trade uh, in a few moments. But first, we start with Kevin Durant and where he is going. Ryan, at this point, it's been a little bit of time. Been some hours, some separation. If you're Sean Marks, are you calling him up and trying to convince him to maybe rescind this trade request at this point? I think you're doing a number of things that may be one of them. What you're also doing is talking to the other 29 teams and setting a very high bar. And we've seen the bar, in my opinion, go up today with the package that Minnesota gave up to get Rudy Gobert. Uh, Kevin Durant's a much better player. He's also on a four-year contract. He fits with every team in the league. And so the, the dance in the balance, Greg, is if you have free agents, uh, how long are you willing to wait? How long are the players and the agents willing to wait, um, you know, in terms of KD holding up the league and the business they're doing? Because everybody has their eyes on Brooklyn. Uh, but as you know, as a former player, the player and the agent has to do what's best for him, not necessarily wait on KD. Yeah, it's going to be interesting also because, you know, what we might think of certain players, uh, someone in the front office may evaluate and think dearly. I mean, the analogy I would use is a draft board, right? Somebody who has this guy number one on their board, someone else may have him number eight. So it's going to be dependent upon what Brooklyn looks at. Let's say with the hypothetical of a DeAndre Ayton. I mean, they may view him in a much higher regard. Therefore, maybe they don't get the same type of uh, deal that you saw with Rudy Gobert. But ultimately, I do think something's going to happen. I think you're going to see Kevin moving on. And I also think he's going to end up on a contender, whether it be Phoenix or Miami or a wild card, which is also a, a distinct possibility. In your mind right now, Ryan, who's kind of the front runner as far as just having the assets to, to acquire a guy like Kevin Durant? The Suns do, but the Aiton factor complicates things with him being a restricted free agent. Base year compensation issues are involved, as is the hard cap for Brooklyn receiving a player in a sign and trade. So I think that's where it's more complicated than maybe it looks externally, because it might have to involve a third team or a fourth team. Also, keep an eye on the Boston Celtics, led by Jalen Brown, a package there I think would be very intriguing, and the Toronto Raptors. They have a lot of young talent. And, 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 and the, you know, another factor, Brooklyn doesn't have to trade them. They don't have to trade them today. They don't have to trade them at any time. Uh, so that's why this could play out for a while, and I think Sean Marks and his staff will continue to ask for a big package. And to your point earlier in the bill, maybe recruit KD behind the scenes to try to get this to simmer down a little bit to take some pressure off the franchise in the short term. And Gia, what about Kyrie Irving and all of this now? Uh, he's kind of waiting to see what happens here with KD, I'm assuming. No, I don't think he's waiting at all. I, I think he, that ship has sailed. I, I think he is looking to be moved as well. And I think the organization at this point, 